Hey, how's it going? It's Jim, and today we're looking at the Booster S Plus from E2. And I shot a lot of this video about two weeks ago, and they just came out with a updated model. Um, so this one was the previous model. This had it was $699 US dollars. The new one, unfortunately, they raised the price by $100, so now it's $699. I'll show you some of the differences as well as just go through the specs. Just so you know, mechanically and electrically, there's not a difference. So it's mostly an aesthetic difference, uh, but let's get in close and check it out. New model on the right, slightly older model on the left. Uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about the differences real quick and then we'll move on to the rest of everything. As you can see, the newer model has a lot of the shared ideas with the GT 2020, including the rubberized deck, the little bit of gold embling, and the folding, the gold embling, did I say embling? I don't even know that's a word. Anyway, that little, that little silver part um, and part of the folding mechanism. Other than that, there's really not much of a change. Housed in the deck of both of these scooters is a 36 volt, 8.7 amp hour Samsung cell battery. So you get a little over uh, 300 watt hours of capacity, which gives you an estimated range of 20 miles according to E2. Uh, that deck that it is sitting underneath is five and three quarters inches wide by 17 inches long. And there's actually no change, if you can see here, in the deck size between the new uh, outgoing and the newer model. The motor is also the same. We have a 500 watt hub motor here in the front. Very quiet motor as we'll hear as we're going with solid eight and a half inch tires on the front. I'm hoping one of these two displays is visible to you. Um, the displays on these scooters are notoriously not great in bright daylight. Uh, they do show up really well at night. Um, you have a five bar battery indicator with, uh, it's kind of like 10% percentage increments, even though the battery indications are uh, less precise than that. The functionality of the, these displays is slightly limited. You can turn your lights off and on, you, so you have a headlight up here and then a tail light in the back, as you can see. And when the lights are on, you get a little extra functionality. It gets slightly brighter. Uh, you have kind of your normal stuff here. You got trip, and that one doesn't, it's not a difference because that one hasn't been ridden. But you got trip and current, you know, lifetime odometer and trip odometer. Also, it has external internal temperature, which is kind of interesting. You can change in the different units. They are in the different units. And you can set speed limits, uh, four speed limits and one unlimited. Uh, the other settings allow you to turn kickstart off and on, cruise control off and on, and sport mode off and on, which the sport mode basically eliminates the speed limiter. I'm not sure if you can see that well from a quality perspective, but these scooters are very well put together. Like they're very solid. Uh, you know, there's some plastic bits, but it's not too much. You got the wire minding on both versions. Um, the one thing that's a little odd to me, honestly, is that there's some carryovers from the GT that aren't really tailored to this scooter, which you have a hole here for this is where the brake line would go for the drum brake on the GT 2020, and also the hole for the brake cable here. Um, you know, this being plastic, it still works just fine. I just, I kind of like the uh, little simple metal style on the other, the last year's model. Uh, the latch mechanism is nicer, borrowed the one borrowed from the GT 2020, and a little more distance between the charge port and the release mechanism, which is kind of nice because on the outgoing model, you tended to flip this with your finger. I mean, not your finger. <laughs> Well, I'm switching with, switching with my finger, but with your foot when you're folding it. Uh, charging right there via a 3 amp charger, so you get shorter charge times, more on the order of four hours. Component wise, there's not a lot to talk about. Um, you know, you now have the rubberized deck versus the grip tape deck. Um, you know, you still have eight and a half inch solid tires front and rear. Thumb brake, thumb and throttle and brake up here with the uh, button folding style handlebar where you hit this button, pull out, and it releases down. Uh, still two handlebar positions, which give you 
37 inches from the deck to the lower position to the handlebars and 40 at the higher position. Uh, the deck has three inches of ground clearance and is five inches off the ground, so it really does enable you to kick as you're riding. One thing from the 2020, I'm gonna put it this way, just get a little extra angle. I do really like that they borrowed from the, oh, I'll go this side. The GT is that they borrowed this little safety lock. So you pull this down and that it disables, you can't possibly accidentally disengage the handlebar, the stem folding mechanism. So I think that's a nice feature. Uh, both of them fold with the same method, which this hook, this hook up here folds down into the fender right there. Uh, neither have a kickstand, so you have to put it in this little locked position. I do think this folding mechanism is a lot more user friendly than the outgoing uh, mechanism. Uh, dual, uh, dual spring suspension, you got a spring in the front and an adjustable spring here underneath in the rear. I've kind of covered some of the other specifications, but just a few more, um, and these will all be down in the description as well. The scooters weighed in at 24.9 pounds. Still a very light, very portable scooter, uh, but that's a bit of an over overestimation from what is on the website, which is at 22 pounds. The last thing I'll cover here before we get out and ride is it does have this kind of emergency brake is kind of the way they're titled, but it does not disengage the throttle. So this, this doesn't really qualify to me as an electronic brake. Um, it's really where the handlebar folds in, in the folded position. So there you can tell, fender down, it, it still wants to move forward. So it doesn't disengage the throttle. Uh, here's showing you again, because of that dual stage, you can kind of roll that down and it's actually quite an easy uh, mechanism to fold and then, then it, it clicks in with a really nice positive click. All right, just so you know, the rest of this review will be done on the black scooter. Mechanically, the, they are the same. Same motor, same battery. It's just these few textural and stem details that are different. I do think the new one looks a little nicer quality. It's borrowing some of the stuff from the GT 2020. Uh, it's a little disappointing that the price went up, honestly, even though it's a hundred dollars, you know, that starts to push it out of the budget category to me. Uh, but still, it, it's a real fun little scooter to ride around on and let's go ride it. So there's a, a bit of a, just a smallest amount of groaning as you're accelerating. Um, just so you know, I'm, at, I'm sitting at about 50-60% uh, battery, um, which I actually thought I was a little higher. So I'm going to do a top speed here and see how closely I match. I've been getting a top speed of about 18, almost, almost 19 miles per hour. Um, it shows a little optimistic on the screen. You'll see down on the camera what that speed is. Um, but I'm going to do a little buzz around and try to give you a feel. So the deck height, you'll probably see from that angle, the deck is five inches off the ground with three inches of clearance. Uh, so it lends itself to being able to kick and really be active with the scooter when you're riding around, which I like. So you'll see right in here, when a road like this, it's a little bit, you know, the pavement isn't awesome. You get the, the fine vibrations come through with these really firm, solid tires, uh, but the larger bumps are handled quite well with the suspension. So you end up with a, even on longer rides, you get a little vibrational feel in your hands, uh, even though you don't really get a whole lot, uh, you know, of jarring vibration that it's, so it's kind of an interesting, the suspension in some ways works really well, in some ways 
uh, you know, just can't compensate fully for the solid tires. So here we are at uh, top speed. The display shows 20, right now we're showing 19.9. Um, I feel like uh, when I'm at a full charge, I get a little faster speed than this. Here's a little bit of view how this does on some bigger bumps, like I was saying. It handles those kind of larger bumps without a lot, not much problem. And the scooter being so light, I feel like I can bunny hop it and get over little imperfections. So the, the weight is a real, probably one of the bigger selling points for this scooter. So I'm in full acceleration here. And I was very surprised on where when I analyzed my data on this one, it feels like a spunky scooter. But come to find out, this scooter was the slowest I have tested to date to 100 feet uh, at like a 7.6 seconds. You'll see how it compares to some other scooters on the screen. Um, but it just didn't, uh, it just doesn't have a lot of off the line oomph with the, even with the 500 watt motor but it doesn't feel that slow, which is interesting. Uh, then you jump over to braking, and I'm gonna brake here. You can hear it does, the, the electronic brake is quite strong. Um, and it, as far as electronic braking scooters, it does quite well. Like it, it kinda, the scooters that brake better than this are really scooters that have a mechanical option and because of those limitations with that fender brake, I haven't even tried to test that as like in an emergency braking scenario. The hill climbing, the scooter did pretty well. And it actually was kind of in the middle of the pack. So it's a little surprising that it did so poorly in the acceleration, but quite well on the hill climb. But it seems like just the, that initial throttle response is really really I it's really really light And I don't know if you're hearing right there. Um, I did a little riding on a dusty trail and uh, I got a little dust in the rear spring. So it's squeaking a little bit because I need to put some either WD-40 or some chain lube in there to kind of quiet it down a little bit. Range testing, of course, that's a big thing that people want to know about. Uh, the range test one was actually done by my lady friend I was riding the Booster, I mean the GT 2020, and went just under 22 miles. She had about 20% battery remaining. And that was kind of going at nearly the top speed of this scooter. So in the 15 to 20 mile an hour range, uh, pretty much the whole time. The second range test I did up in a really hilly area of town. And I did this in two legs, as you'll see. Um, and I got a little over 16 miles, which that was at a pretty decent speed and up a lot of hills. And the scooter, like I said, on the hill climb does pretty well. And the nice thing too with the low deck height, it's easy to add a little kicking when you're doing hill climbs or you know anytime the motor needs a little extra oomph. And I tend to like to kick off from a stop actually, just because it's a it's a fun way for me to ride. But hopefully you're getting a feel for how this is on the road, uh, on this bike path, which is, you know, uh, kind of, I don't know, it's smoothish. <laughs> Good thing I wasn't going through that part of the path corner right there. Sheesh. I'm at the 40% battery mark as I'm under power. Of course, you get a little dip 
uh, when you're under power. The E2 doesn't seem to do have that sag on the battery indicator quite as much as some other scooters, but it's always wise to stop and let it kind of recover its true voltage before you make a decision on what your actual battery percentage is. Uh, but this is what I'm getting for a top speed right now at about the 40% battery range. So if you're doing a longer ride, this is kind of where you're going to be sitting for a lot of that. So it, it feels okay. It, it's definitely, the, the screen's reading 20, 20 to 21 miles per hour. I, I know we're not going that fast. The size of the deck down there, uh, you know, that width, the... The size of it with my size 10, 11 feet does not allow a lot of different foot positions. If you can see there, um, you know, you kind of have to be very purposeful if you're going to readjust your feet, change which ones, you know, pointing forward, which I often do. Um, that being said, my son wears a size 14 shoe and this is the scooter he prefers. He just likes the lightness and the way it rides. All right, I just want to do a quick follow up here because I left off the video. I was writing it uh, close to empty battery or 40% battery. Um, so I wanted to do a little ride here just to show you how it responds when you got a more full battery. And also I needed to address the squeak in the rear spring that you can hear here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick and uh, how to adjust the spring and then we'll do a little ride. All right, there's that pesky spring. We got a 14 millimeter bolt here. So I'm gonna back this out a little bit to soften the suspension a little more and I'm just gonna hit all these little spots in here with some WD-40. I'm basically hitting all those pivot points. Now, a lot of times WD-40 is not really what's, you know, the best choice for a lot of things like chains and stuff because it tends to attract dust. Um, but for a spring like this, I feel like it, it's an acceptable use and it's a little easier to get in here than uh, a little tube of some bearing grease. Right, so I wiped off a little bit of excess WD-40 in there. One of the other nice things about WD-40 is it actually works really good for kind of like cleaning off uh, grime. So, uh, but you can see, whoop. That little bit of noise is now gone. So let's do a quick ride. All right, we're back here on the scooter with full battery. So I'm just going to do a little ride around here to give you a better feel for, uh, you know, kind of what feels like higher in its state of charge. Like I detailed before, this this really finished surprisingly low in the acceleration to 100 feet, uh, which it doesn't really feel that slow. Um, you know, it could be the low, the low deck height, um, and, and you know, I think the throttle is a little bit metered, uh, but the throttle and, and brake both have pretty good feel. So we're right off the charger. So we're really at the, the screen just read 23.1. So I've gotten, right now it's saying 20, up to 22.8. I've gotten up to 23.1 on the display, just, and that's fresh off the charger. And hopefully you can hear now, once we got that little bit of squeak handled from the the dust in the rear spring uh, it really is a very quiet scooter the motor is quiet and it you know you get that chattery bump from small imperfections like i'm going to show right now uh, but generally it just it handles things pretty doggone good hey it's jim just wrapping up my review here with the booster s plus Uh, I think it's a fun little scooter. It's, you know, I, I really like the lightweight. To me, that's the biggest selling point, and the performance is really pretty good considering its weight. Uh, range is better than I expected. Uh, me able to get over 16 miles with lots of hills, being 175 pounds with not a whole lot of battery and a whole lot of weight was surprising to me. Um, but 
If you have some experience with this scooter, questions, comments, feel free to leave them below. Some reference information down in the description. Uh, you know, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see some more content, and also be doing a comparison between this and the GT 2020 coming up real soon. So thanks a lot, and I'm going to jump over this wall, not literally, and play some uh, disc golf behind here. Uh, I might put in a couple shots of some disc golf. Until next time, we'll see you later. Catch the wave, field.